Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah, and today my teammates and I will be presenting about GrabCycle, which is a small social enterprise in the service sector. This presentation will be conducted by myself, Premi, Aying, Scott, and Dulanga. So now I'm going to pass it to Aying for the background information of the company. Good morning, everyone. My name is Long Aying, and I'll be covered the introductions, uh, unique selling propositions, and the recognition achieved for the chosen company. So the chosen company of our group is called Grab Cycle. It is a social enterprise that developed in 2016 and founded by the Rezo Shahi. And the, and the company is aimed to reduce the levels of food waste as well as to build a better awareness of food weightage in Malaysia community. Basically, how they working is that they operating their business through the online platform, which selling and delivering the food suffers in the market to the public at an affordable price. And this will be late, uh, and this will be uh, further explained in the product strategies like. Uh, beside that, the mission statements of Grab Cycle is to give food a second chance, which uh, they aim to reduce the levels, the levels of food waste in Malaysia. Beside that, their long-term goals is to expand their business across the Asian regions and hence to build a social enterprise ecosystem. Next. And the next slide is the unique selling propositions of Grab Cycle. The bigger difference of Grab Cycle is their community aspect. Each month, they will use a part of their profit to support and help the low income fa Malaysian families with the pantry products such as egg, oil, and rice, and so on. Until this moment, Grab Cycle has been helping and supporting more than 36 families in Malaysia on a monthly basis. The response, the response of the specific social concerns while also enabling Grab Cycle to sell sustainability, this become their unique selling proposition which, which help them to differentiate from its competitors. Next. And the next slide is the recognition achieved by the Grab Cycle. From 2016, Grab Cycle has been avoided 7,000 kgs of food being weighted, and as well as to save 46,000 Malaysian ringgit for their customers. Also, they have oh, they uh, beside that they have also total amount 6,000 of six Grab level which. Uh, Grab lovers, which is their loyal customers. And last but not least, Grab Cycle have also awarded uh, the Man Manual Life Sustainability Awards in 2016 Alliance Bank's SME Innovation Challenge, which winning a prize that worth 100,000 of Malaysia ringgit. Till now, Grab Cycle has ranked at the top 10 SME in Malaysia and they are still fighting. For the cost of cost weight, uh, for the cost of food wastage management. That's all for my presentation, and I'll pass it to Dulanga. Uh, thank you, Aying. Uh, now I'll be speaking on the summary of the past analysis. So mainly, uh, in the political side, we'll be checking on the halal requirements and the economic would be the economic development and circular economy. When it comes to social empowering communities and the change in the, country, the cultural mindset and the technological would be the digital economy and the online platform. Um, can I have the next slide? Okay, so now, now the political factors, since Malaysia is a Muslim country, the current trend that's been noticed is that Muslims do care more about the halal certification and the products that uh, that I mean halal certification on the products than the source or status of their income. Now the halal certified stamp shows signs that the product is trustworthy and genuine for Muslims to consume. Now Grab Cycle has made adjustments uh, due to the food regulations uh, that only cooked halal food and groceries which 
uh, have the halal certified uh, stamp will be provided. Um, can I have the next slide? Uh, the economic factors are, um, so currently there has been an inflation in the nation's food and live animals imports. So from 2013, from RM, RM 38.9 billion to RM 51.3 billion in 2017. So yearly the price of food has been uh, increasing uh, in a way making low income families not having expenditures to purchase the necessities. So firstly, Grab Cycle has started to donate edible surplus food to help minimize, uh, minimize poverty levels. Secondly, Grab Cycle does boost the economy development by creating job possibilities and utilizing local resources uh, in a way contributing to the GDP. Now, lastly, the circular economy. This is where um, you could say that other companies, like other companies' waste can be turned into raw materials and be either reused, repaired, or remanufactured. Uh, in this case, Grab Cycle, they take surplus or unwanted foods from restaurants and supermarkets and resell them at a much lower cost. Uh, can I have the next slide? Uh, Coming to social factors, so currently the food wastage by Malaysians per day is enough to feed 12 million, which is three meals per day. That is literally half of one, on, one of KLCC towers. Uh, now, as Malaysians are changing their mindsets on alternative ways to giving to charity, Grab Cycle makes full use of this and raises awareness around food wastage. Uh, Grab Cycle provides low-income families with necessities from their own profit, uh, which they gain from the sales. Uh, also, Grab Cycle has been capitalizing on this by helping and supporting 36 families uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, the technological factors. Since technology has been advancing day by day, around 80% of the users in Malaysia between the age of 16 to 16 and 64 do use online stores and apps for grocery shopping. So Grab Cycle, being aware of these statistics, have created their own online application called Grab App, which is available on both iOS and Android. This allows consumers to have immediate and direct access to their stores. Also, they have an online platform that gives supermarkets, farms, and restaurants a chance to contribute to reducing food waste wastage. Basically how this works is any surplus food uh, products will be given to Grub Cycle for a small cost, which will then be put up on their online store for consumers to purchase. Uh, that will be all for my part. I will be passing it on to Premi. Thank you, Dulanga. Uh, good morning, Miss. So as for my part, I will be discussing about the SWOT analysis of Club Cycle. <clears throat> for their company strength, they hold a very strong USP, which is to raise awareness about food waste, while they make a very uh, accessible food available at a bargain price, and they were uh, able to provide a solution uh, to the increasing cost of the living of the, for the low-income families. Second strength will be the Grub Cycle. They also have begin picking up pace by gaining recognition for being a social enterprise and they won two awards at the Alliance Bisma Challenge, which was held in 2016. The third strength will be Grub has gained a strong digital presence on online platform and they continue to fight against the food waste through many well-known apps known as Grub Mobile, Grub Bites, and also Grub Groceries. Moving on to the weakness of this company is that their distribution is only restricted to Klang Valley, which is known as urban areas. These services will be more profitable if they have happen to operate in rural areas, which they are lacking of. And this is seen as their weakness as their area of coverage is very small. Second weakness is having a very small number of suppliers who are, no, who are not ready to sell their surplus items. Most of the time, restaurants will throw away leftover meals and from what we have found, restaurants find that logistic being a challenge for them to drive around and deliver leftover food is not cost effective and it increases the concern of the food safety. The third weakness is that Grab Cycle giving away unmarketable items, uh, especially food 
that are about to expire and has a very low quality, which is not charitable at all. <clears throat> and the threat of the grub cycle is they will be facing the rising number of their competitor. There are three other companies we found that have similar goals and objectives. This can affect grub cycle in many ways as the competitor's marketing strategy is also using <clears throat> mobile and web platform to distribute surplus food. The second threat is the rise in the number of competitors. When the number of the competitor increases, so does the price of a good. This will thus affect the supply curve to move to a higher price of a product, which might affect the grub cycle's financial statement in the long run. Opportunities for the grub cycle is, because now they're having a lot of challenges involving innovation, creativity, grub cycle has the chance to participate themselves in those competitions in order to gain more recognition from the public, and this could help them to increase their audience reach. Second opportunity is, Due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, many people have been aware of food wastage prevention and idea. So this club cycle can use this as their golden opportunity to market themselves and expand their business. The third opportunity is, since they are known as a social enterprise and its mission is to tackle very prominent issue in Malaysia, which is food wasting, they have a higher chance for consumers to choose grub cycle over the alternative because according to our research, we have found that 69% of Malaysian prefer and support companies that has a very high social mission. And that is all from my part. I will pass it on to Scott. Thank you. Thank you, Premi. Good, good morning. My name is Scott and I will be presenting about the STP, which are segmentation, targeting and positioning. Now there are two parts of segmentation, which are demographics and psychographics. So why we have chosen occupation, which has been mentioned on the slides with the age as low as 15 to 35, is because according to Muller 2019, Statista has measured about 86.9% of respondents below 20 years old owns a smartphone. And that is the reason we believe is the best approach. Similar to a study on corporate social responsibility, CSR, reveals as high as 88% consumers will be loyal and have a positive image of a company which supports environment mentioned by Butler 2018. Moving on to our target market positioning. So we have selectively chosen two factors under behavior segmentation. First one will be benefit sought. So consumers are more likely to make purchase of our food with discounted prices, of course, to lessen their financial burden as the economy is failing due to the pandemic lockdown. Next would be purchasing as usage. So this might not be sound, might not sound very smart as it operates only based on season to measure the demand of customers. But however, Grub Cycle is only a small enterprise and it, as a small enterprise, they do not have a large capital to target a large scale of customers. So during summer seasons, uh, it is expected to have an increased sales on fresh fruits, ice cream, or juice to beat the heat. Another way uh, in terms of season is that back in year 2019, where there was a season, milk tea drinks used to have an extremely high demand when customers would consume it day and night. And finally, we have positioned ourselves to be unique. What they call a niche market, Comparing to other food catering services, the service Grub Cycle is providing the market is somehow underrated, which means they are little to non competition, making us the only supplier. Uh, that is that's all for STP. Uh, I will pass this on to the next presenter about product strategy. Thank you, Scott. So now I'm going to be presenting about the product strategy. So as we can see, uh, Grub Cycle has four main features for its services. We have firstly Grub Bites, Grub Groceries, Grub Mobile, and Grub Homemade. For the core product, we have seen that Grub Groceries is the initial concept where they sell products which are close to the expiry date at a discounted price. For the augmented product, that is the product that will differentiate it from the, custom, from the competitors, we have Grub Mobile, that is they collect overproduced veggies and uh, distribute it to the PPR communities at 50% of the market price. 
Lastly, we have Grub Homemade, which is basically expanding the lifespan of uh, products and turning them into table products. An example of this can be turning cabbages into kimchi. Grub Homemade is basically the, the distinguishing factor that uh, makes Grub Cycle unique. And lastly, we have Grub Bites, which allows customers to purchase pastries and cakes from cafes at a bargain price. So altogether, these are the total product offerings of Grub Cycle. For the recommendation of our product strategy, we have decided to use a product modification strategy and by using a food cam. What the food cam does basically is it uses advanced imaging technology to assess the quality of food. As Premi has mentioned earlier, there are concerns that have been raised about the quality of food of uh, Grub Cycle because they sell the goods that are close to the expiry date. So by enabling uh, an app feature which assesses the quality of the food, it uh, allows Grub Cycle to enable a transparent food system uh, towards its consumers as well as its suppliers. So to narrow down this strategy, we can narrow it down to a functional features improvement. That is, we are satisfying additional needs by increasing the attractiveness and making it more convenient to use. Why we are doing this is because it can help Grub Cycle to maintain the existing demand, to attract new users, face the competition, and uh, increase sales and overall profits. Next, I'm going to talk about the pricing strategy. So the two main pricing strategy is bargain price and cost based. Bargain price is basically allowing the consumers to negotiate a price and fix the price based on the negotiation which has been made. And this is basically adopted by Grub Bites. Secondly, we have cost based, which is adopted by Grub Groceries and Grub Mobile, where it can be either varying discounted pricing or a fixed 50% of the market price. Moving on to the competitor analysis, we have seen that the two main competitors of Grub Cycle is Food Plus, Penang, and Rescue Club. The main differences that we have highlighted is that Grub Cycle faces fierce competition with Rescue Club because Rescue Club uh, provides 40 to 70% of the market price. So Rescue Club does have a competitive advantage on Grub Cycle. However, we have seen that uh, Grub Cycle also offers options such as varying discounted prices and bargain prices as well. So this gives it a competitive advantage over its competitors. For the recommendation, we have decided to adopt a product bundling pricing because we have seen that 63% of Malaysians value financial incentives when it comes to grocery shopping. So by using a box which will... Uh, be contained with a combination of groceries and food items sold at a lower price. It will allow the consumers to save money as, the, as purchasing the individual contents in that box would be more expensive for them. And lastly, it will allow Grub Cycle to increase their sales while at the same time preventing food waste. Thirdly, I'm going to be talking about the distribution strategy. So their strategy is mainly from the producer to the wholesaler to the retailer and the end consumer. Grub Cycle basically distributes its services around Klang Valley only. And how it works is basically they will approach the selected grocery stores and then they will collect the selected food. They will send out the list of products to the consumers, which then they will get orders, then they will deliver, and lastly, they will send a receipt to their consumers. For the recommendation of the distribution strategy, a short-term recommendation will be to expand in Sabah as we have seen that 50% of the country's poorest people are found in Sabah because of the low employment and business opportunities. So we have seen also that how Premi has mentioned that uh, Grub Cycle is only restricted to urban areas. So it would be a great opportunity for Grub Cycle to expand in Sabah as uh, they would attract a larger audience that is low-income earners while increasing their sales and profit. And secondly, to uh, our second recommendation, which is to be in the long term, is to have a physical store that will specialize in surplus food, which will allow Grub Cycle to not only build customer relationship, but ensure a safer and more secure payment method. So this is a long term recommendation because we are currently in a, we are currently having a pandemic and um, having a physical store wouldn't be uh, rational and realistic. Lastly, we have our promotion strategy. So as Grub Cycle is focused more online, 
it focuses on app promotion advertisement, which is cheaper for them and more uh, offers them more flexible working hours. And they have also capitalized on social media marketing as they have seen that 81% of Malaysians are active social media users. So by promoting on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, they have embraced digital transformation and have successfully reached out their target market. Finally, for the recommendation of promotion strategy, we have decided to advertise through radio advertisement because we have seen that 20 million Malaysians are tuning in to an average of 14 hours weekly. So this can be an opportunity for GrabCycle to market its services. And lastly, we have referral promotions, which are billboards basically. So as GrabCycle is fighting for a social cause, which is preventing food waste, it can uh, use emotional marketing to have an impactful impression on the consumers. So that's it for our recommendation and presentation. These are our references. Thank you very much.